expected to stand up against me became some glad and your bias and your shaman and stood up against the things that God had given me to do. Right. It's been rough. It's been rough. At 2000, the onset of the year, I told you to look around. Have a look around. I challenge you to look around saying that there are those that you see today that you may not see tomorrow. I told you that. I told you that. But I told you at that time that regardless of who comes, who goes, who stays, regardless of that, I have a charge to keep. I have a God to glorify. I have a mission that I must accomplish. I have to keep on pressing for the mark of the higher call, which is in Christ Jesus. I have to stay on the wall. Come on. I challenge you, I said that some, some who start the year with us no longer are here. I told you that some of those people who, who had left at that time, they would begin to defame my name. They would begin to talk about me. They will begin to abuse me. They will begin to misuse me. They will begin to use my name in poor sentences. They will begin to turn, turn me inside out. But the devil is a lie because the truth stands on its own. A lie is wicked. A lie will fall once the truth stands up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you, I told you, I said, when, when we made that statement, when that statement came to me, the Lord said things decently in order that discipline was going to hit the church. Yeah. The discipline was going to hit the church. And some people who do not understand the benefits of receiving correction in their rebellion will run. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. They will run. Don't get me wrong. You won't find someone with a quicker sense of humor than I do. You ain't gonna find nobody. You can find nobody. I, and I may joke, I may even jive. I'm quick with it. But the one thing for sure I'm serious about is this calling that God has placed on my life. I am serious about this calling. And when God tells me to do something, I am going to do exactly what God told me to do. Hallelujah. So so I've, I've been upholding righteousness. I ain't been playing, I've been upholding righteousness. And those with a purpose of heart to be here and not a hidden self-serving agenda are yet holding on. They're yet holding on. They're yet believing in what God has given us to do. But those who are not, huh, hallelujah, not feeling us, see, those who are not supporting, huh, my God, my God, that means that their heart wasn't right in the first place. Hallelujah. Stand on the wall is not the same as being backed against the wall. They said one well, of the worst things that you could possibly do is back a cat into a corner. Right, right. But staying on the wall is not the same as being backed against the wall. Backed against the wall means that you have run out of options. Means you are stagnant. Means that you are immobile. Means you can't go any further. You have given up and in desperation you may lash out. And your lashing out is done without a purpose plan with no strategy. You may flail around and may not make any progress at all towards your goal. But oh, in the case of so brother Nehemiah. Yes. Uh, he was not stagnant. He was not immobile. He was steady in his purpose and he was making progress toward what God Almighty had told him to do. Nehemiah was going to stay on the wall. You've got to be very careful that there are some people that are sandblasting devices in your life that are trying to make you come down away from the blessing that God told you to work on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Nehemiah is working toward this God-sized task, a task that God had given him, a task before him that had been one that he had to take the right steps for in preparation. Huh? Before him was a God-sized task, a task which he didn't have the resources to do of his own fruition. But the God-sized task before him didn't originate in his heart because the heart of man doesn't come up with such bold, audacious, audacious tasks. The heart of man, it says, is deprived in the Bible. It says it's void of understanding of the things of God. This is why God said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are high above your ways. My thoughts are high above your thoughts. I think of the big picture, whereas you may be thinking about self. You may be thinking about your, your you and your boo and your few. You may be thinking about that. But God says, I'm concentrating on the whole event. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Nehemiah didn't have the, the resource to do this job, but the purpose in which he moved originated in the heart of God, mm -hmm. and God placed that purpose in his heart. All as a plan to reestablish the worship in Jerusalem, the worship in the temple in Jerusalem. God found a man 
faithful. Oh, it's so hard to find a faithful man. My God. He found a faithful man. He found a faithful servant. And he placed a purpose on Nehemiah's heart in the form of a burning burden. Burning burden. The prophet Nehemiah, the prophet Jeremiah said it's like fire. Fire. Shut up in my home. Fire. Brother Jeremiah, I feel you, man. I feel you because it is like fire. Every time I get fed up with folks, and yes, I do get fed up with folks, and I look at how simple my life would be without pastoring, that fire begins to rise up on the inside of me. And the Lord reminds me of what he's done for me. He reminds me of my purpose. He reminds me of how good he has been to me. So the fire rises up, and I stay on the wall. Amen. I'm reminded of the grace of God. I'm reminded of his mercy. Oh, without his mercy and grace, where would I be? Huh? Well, I'm sorry, where would you be without his mercy and grace too? Huh? Amen. I, 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 I find myself in a peculiar situation. You know, I'm in, I'm in a situation where there's a pastor who don't take us out and don't need us out. And because of that, I catch the grief of envy among my peers. Mm -hmm. I do. Some parishioners and others. Some be like, why are you doing this? What is this in this for you? What's in this for me is that my God is glorified. I don't have any hidden agenda. Huh? My cry has always been, oh, that God would be glorified. Oh, that God would be glorified. That's always been my cry. That's always been my battle cry. So week after week, I go through where, it's, where, it's, where it's the burden is heavy. And, and, and the burden is, burden is not easy when you pour out your heart week after week, day after day. When you sacrifice not only yourself, but you sacrifice time with your family. When you sacrifice things such as your children's uh, uh, sporting events when you sacrifice all these things so I'm not the only one that's sacrificing my family is sacrificing for the glory of God but yet even though you're sacrificing all these things you are still mistreated oh but I can't complain when I consider the Lord Jesus I can't complain in the suffering that he's done for me I can't fix my mouth to complain how dare I be insulted when he was insulted for me how dare I be huh, my God of when he was offended for me. How dare I get indignant when he was indignified for me. How dare I do this. I just have to stay on the wall. Stay in his presence. Continue to press for the mark of the high calling which is found in Christ Jesus. I have to continue on the way that he has given me to go. Yes, yes. I don't know about you but I'm staying on the wall. I'm staying on the wall. I think I can get some help in here because I know some of you have been through some things too. I know some of you are going through some things where people are mistreating you. But here's some medicine for you. The scripture tells us that the things of this present world are not worthy to compare to the glory which shall be revealed. You have to stay on the wall. You have to stay focused on the things that God has given you to do. You have to continue to press the envelope, my God, my God. We have to continue to do what God has called you to do. Stay on the wall. Yes. The fire keeps igniting me, though, Sister Sims. It keeps me going. Yes. Nehemiah had fire that burned up selfishness mm -hmm. and declared the time had come for worship yes. in the place that God had chosen from. God had chosen this place to worship. The question may be in your mind. I want to teach you this morning. The question may be in your mind. What was so special about this place? Mm -hmm. Why? Why was Jerusalem the place of worship? Why is it so important for us to support Israel and not allow the Palestinians to have Jerusalem as their capital? Why? You want to know why? You want to know why? Genesis 12 tells you the beginning of why. It says that those who bless Israel shall be blessed. Those who curse Israel shall be cursed. That's part of the why. That's part of the why. It's a simple statement. It's a simple question. You cannot make your legacy about splitting what God has said will be joined. Right. Yes. My God. I might get a phone tap for that. Amen. Government employee talking against the president. Wow. Whatever. How many more days? 19? Glory to God. Amen. The question may be in your mind, why? And though there are several link answers, the one answer which I find fascinating is found in 1 Kings 8, 29 through 30. It says, that thine eyes may be open. This is Solomon talking. Mm -hmm. That thine eyes may be open toward this house 
night and day. He was in Jerusalem, huh? Uh, even toward the place of which thou hast said, he was in the newly built temple. My name shall be there. This is what God was telling him. My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. Huh? And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant, Solomon talking to him again, and of thy people, Israel, when they shall pray toward this place. Huh? It says that even if they're in captivity, even if they're not in the place of worship, if they would turn toward that place of worship, that God would remember his promise unto Solomon. And that when God remembers his promise unto Solomon, he will begin to raise up people in order to bring about the promise. This is how God works. God raises up people to stay on the wall. Yes. Amen. Solomon first said, when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou in heaven, thy dwelling place. And when thou hear it, forgive. Solomon praying for the dedication of the temple. In his prayer, he spoke of the geographical significance of Israel by getting a covenant promise from God. The promise he made was that if the people would pray in the direction of Israel. Oh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 reiterates this. It says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I what? Hear from heaven and then will I what? I'll forgive their sins and then will I what? I will heal their land. There are some even in here right now that need their land healed. Oh, my dear old chica. They need their land healed. They have went through their made mistakes. They need their land healed. They don't need to be beat down anymore. You need to help them to get their land healed. You need to let them know that God still loves them. Let them know that he still cares for them. Let them know that God is on the wall for them. Amen. Hallelujah. There are things that the saved of God have on their heart. God has placed things on their heart. He's placed a drive to accomplish something that is obviously not to glorify self, but to help others and to bring glory to the Father. God looks through and forth on the earth looking for faithful servants. He looks for hearts which are pure and will allow a place for Holy Spirit to rest upon. And why should the Most High God seek or be offered a lower place when he's the King of kings and Lord of lords? Why should he be offered a lower place in your life, a place of lower priority when he is God, when he's El Shaddai, Elohim? Why should he be offered a perch in your life when God wants a place that he can stand on? Stand on the wall speaks of being up high, like the eagle above the storm. Right. My God, stand on the wall speaks of standing on principles. Right. And boo-boo, when you stand on principles, people are going to bust you up. Yeah. They're going to mistreat yeah. you. might get ready. <laughs> get ready, get ready, get ready. When you stand on what is right. Huh? See, see, the thing is that we as Christians have to stand on what is right, but yet still stand in love. People confuse when you are standing in love with you being mean and obnoxious and just un not understanding. Oh, my God, my God. It's been a rough year. It was a rough year. When you stand on godly principles, you often find yourself standing alone, Sister Glory. You often find yourself... Uh, with a whole more pews looking at you than people. Huh? When you stand on godly principles, you will be called a prude, old-fashioned stick in the mud. You will be called a traditionist when you stand on godly principles. It will be said that you are out of step with the time because you're not doing what people in this day and age are doing. When you stand on the wall, huh? when you stand on the principle that God has given you, God has set forth his principles and God has not changed his principles. A marriage is between a man and a woman is not between Jake and the snake. It's not between a woman and a woman. It's not that way. Oh, my God, my God. Godly principle says that men should go into a man's room because he's a man. Huh? Even if he's thinking he's not sure who he is, if he look down and see the tools he got, he should know who he is and go into the right place. Amen. When you stay on the wall, people are going to do some things to you, Sister Sins. Huh? 
people begin to not even pay tithe. I ain't gonna pay you. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna so you cursing yourself. You ain't bothering me, huh? Because what God has ordained, God has maintained, and God will maintain, huh? And you'll be going through the things that you're going through, trying to stretch from one dollar to the next, huh? Trying to figure out how you're going to make ends meet, but you did it to yourself. When you stand on the wall, when you stand on the principles of God, people are going to do some things to you. I promise you, they are. Tradition and compromise has taken many people off task, and many people have left the wall because they're off task. They're not staying on the wall because many have left even their first love. Many are falling so in love with themselves and their own persona that they get off the wall probably will find a mirror. They're believing their own press. Oh, you did such and such. Oh, you did, you did, you did so good, you such and such. Oh, everything revolves around you. My God. But beloved, it's all about God. Beloved, when God gives you a task, stay on the task. And do not get ahead of God. God provides where he purposes. If God purposed something to be a certain way, God will provide at that place of purpose. Huh? God will lay forth for you a way to get to the place of purpose. And before you, God has already prepared the place of purpose to receive you. But you got to stay on task because God has already laid the groundwork. I was uh, reflecting back on being a father for over 30 years and having to put together many Christmas toys with instructions in Chinese. You, you, anybody feel me? Instructions in Chinese. I've learned some lessons even in that in staying on task and doing things in the order God gave me. Many in the church are skipping from one to seven. Not worrying about two, three, four, and five, six. Huh? Many in the church, you know, and you may be purposed to arrive at seven. You may receive a prophecy that you're going to be an apostle to the nations. Huh? But what you didn't hear in the prophecy was the steps that it had to take to get to that place. It didn't say stop serving immediately what you were doing. When David was anointed king of Israel, he did not run off and start doing everything else. He did not run and become the king immediately. David kept on serving in the capacity as a shepherd boy. He kept on serving in the capacity as a, as a musician for the king. He kept on serving in the capacity as a general of the king's army. David kept on serving before he arrived at that place. And when the king was killed, David did not gloat and say, it's about time David mourned because the king had been killed. So staying on the wall means that you, you have to have to do things in a certain step, in a certain way. Right. Huh? In a certain way. We have so many people who don't understand that. What the brick mason does, the brick mason does things in a certain way. Uh -huh. He don't just stack a bunch of bricks on top of each other and then go to the very top brick and lay out some mortar on the top brick and not put anything in between. He goes step by step. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He goes step by step. And doing things more than one step or doing things out of sequence causes things to be backwards and sideways. Huh? Causes things to be backwards and sideways. I thank God nowadays a lot of the instructions to put together things have pictures too. If it didn't have pictures, Lord, I'd still be putting together some things right now. Huh? I thank God it has pictures. Huh? Oh, but in the instructions of God, there's pictures too. Yes. There's pictures too. There's vivid illustrations in the instruction of God. Huh? He takes plain and simple people. He uses those plain and simple people for his purpose. It's vivid illustration for us. Huh? My God, my God. It is not some complex, overly theological, huh? 
concept. Mm -hmm. It's plain 